What's going on everybody? It's Salvaje. This is my mid-2019 in-depth review for Fortnite Save the World. In this review, I'm going to be going into a lot of detail on what Fortnite Save the World is actually about because this game isn't just about killing zombies, okay? This game is about much more than that. There's a lot of deep aspects to Fortnite Save the World that me and a lot of other reviewers have never really talked about because that would make a video really really long but in this video i'm not going to hold back i'm going to tell you what fortnite save the world is all about so that you can make a purchasing decision that you know you're going to be proud of right and of course i'm also going to be talking about some of the pros about fortnite save the world and why this is such a great game i've said it before and i'm going to say it again save the world is the best pve game that i have ever played period and this is coming from someone that has a lot of experience in pve games like anthem division 2 destiny 2 warframe and destiny 1 so why is that well i'm going to be sharing with you guys what are some of my pros what are some of the things that i love about fortnite save the world and then of course i'm going to be going into a detailed breakdown of what save the world is all about so with that said let's get started one of the reasons why I really like Save the World is because every single week there's always something new to do in the game. They're adding a brand new hero or a brand new weapon, a brand new war game simulation, a brand new quest line, or maybe they are returning a previous event weapon back into the game so that new players can get their hands on it because of course they got the game on Season 9 for example and they weren't able to get a weapon from Season 7 or Season 5 of Save the World. So in other words, every single week as a Save the World player, you're going to have something to look forward to. There's always going to be brand new content or returning content that you're going to be interested on. The second big reason why I love Save the World, simply put, is quest lines. Every single season of Fortnite Save the World, they're going to be adding brand new quest lines into the game. And these quest lines basically keep the narrative going forward after you beat the main campaign. The quest lines are also unique and specific to every season of Save the World. So if you get Save the World on Season 10, you're not going to be able to experience the Season 9 quest lines. But that's not going to be a big deal because the quest lines aren't done in a way that you know, the brand new quest lines that you're going to be listening to, you're going to be lost, I guess you could say, right? If you're a returning player, every single quest line, you know, you're going to be able to understand what's going on. You're going to be able to understand who the characters are if you've played through the main campaign or you're, you know, a little bit into the main campaign. Now, the quest lines are also a ton of fun for me because I think that the dialogue and the way that they're written is just really funny. It's just a really good chill back time. Fortnite Save the World doesn't take itself too seriously, and that's something that I personally enjoy. A lot of games like Destiny, Division 2, Warframe, they're trying to sort of make a statement when it comes down to the world. Fortnite Save the World is just really cool, very chill, very laid back. Another thing that I want to point out also is that you also get unique rewards from these quest lines in Save the World, like a specific weapon or a specific hero. Like, for example, the Tales from Beyond quest line that we currently have at the time we'll be making this video uh, gives you Paleo Luna. And Paleo Luna, at the time we're making this video, is the best ninja in all of Fortnite Save the World. So the quest lines aren't just there to be there. No, the quest lines are also there to give you actual rewards that will inspire you to actually play the game. The third big reason why I love Fortnite Save the World, man, it just always keeps me coming back. Like I said, it's my favorite PvE game for a reason. You know, games like Division 2, Anthem, Destiny 2, boring. After a while, I've just done everything. I've just grinded for everything. There's nothing for me to do. Save the World, completely different. There's always something for me you know, to grind for. Maybe I want to get a specific hero to the max level. Maybe I want my weapon to have full legendary perks. Maybe I want to grind a brand new quest line. Maybe I want to do my daily quest so that I can get some free V-Bucks. The point is, guys, that there's always a reason for me to go back into Save the World. So now that I've given you my three biggest reasons and why I love Save the World, I'm going to be breaking down what Save the World is all about. What is it that you're actually going to be doing in Save the World? Is this game just about killing zombies? Yes and no. Yes, because you are going to be killing zombies 100% of the time, but no, because there's a reason why you're going to be doing specific missions and why you're going to be grinding a specific mission type, etc, etc. So obviously, when you first get into Save the World, you're focusing on the main campaign. You're going to be killing zombies, right? And I'm not going to lie, when you first get Save the World, the game is going to seem really easy, right? Because the first area of the game is really easy. The second area, Plankerton, it's really easy until you get halfway through. When you get halfway through Plankerton, that's when 
the real save the world experience actually sets in. That's where you're, when you're going to have to start building some trap tunnels. You're going to have to start placing some defenders in your storm shield defenses. You know, that's when the gameplay sort of starts sort of juicing itself up. The real save the world gameplay experience isn't just about shooting zombies. It's about building complex trap tunnels that are going to be sending the husk back so that you can actually maximize the trap tunnels. It's about putting in a lot of traps near the husk spawn so that when the husk get to you they're actually really weak. It's about working with your teammates, activating specific abilities at a time so that you can kill the mini boss faster. It's all about having a specific hero loadout that is going to make your hero shine and going to give you an easier time on the mission. It's all about also leveling up your survivors because if you level up your survivors, you're going to be doing more damage. You're going to have more health. So, of course, we grind a specific mission and save the world for two hours, for example, and we get a lot of survivor XP. Now, you could just level up your survivors and your lead survivors really easily and just level up really slowly, or you could actually maximize your survivor squad's experience. You can start grinding to get a survivor that belongs in the Fireteam Alpha. That requires you to play the game, grind for event tickets, open up some event llamas, and then you get that survivor that belongs in the Fireteam Alpha. But then, of course, you have a survivor that belongs in Fireteam Alpha, you place him on Fireteam Alpha, and you see that he has the curious personality. Well, you could play survivors in Fireteam Alpha that don't have the curious personality, and just level them up. But did you know that if you play survivors in Fireteam Alpha that have the curious personality, the same personality that the lead survivor has, those survivors are actually going to help you increase your power level faster? See, some of you guys right now just said, holy shit, I have no idea what this dude's talking about. He lost me. Again, because Save the World is not just about killing zombies. It's about, it's more complex. Save the World is a game that's very easy to understand, but very difficult to master. But the time that you put in for being a student of the game is actually going to get rewarded really, really well. If you understand the mechanics of this game, you enjoy this game even more, which is why if you're considering getting Save the World, I absolutely recommend that you check out my Save the World Beginner's Guide playlist linked in the description and also check out my Save the World University playlist, which is literally a step-by-step -step walkthrough series of every single thing that you need to do as you play Save the World as a beginner. In that series, I'm literally holding your hand and walking you, again, through every single thing that you need to do to maximize your Save the World experience. I want you guys to make a smart purchasing decision when it comes down to Save the World, so let's talk about some of the cons. The game can definitely be a little bit boring when you first start out and a little bit repetitive. I understand that. So I recommend that what you do is you just focus on completing the main quest line, get out of Stonewood as fast as possible, and try to rush through Plankerton while also, you know, just hearing the dialogue from the main quest line. By the time you get to the center of Plankerton, the game is going to be getting a little bit more difficult, and that's also when you're going to have to learn some of the more in-depth mechanics that Save the World has, like putting up traps so that you can stop the husk from getting to you, and also other things like doing specific builds for a specific mission objective, or managing your survivor squads in a really smart and efficient way so that you level up really quickly. I just want to be really clear when I say this. Save the World isn't a PvE game that you hop on for 10 minutes and you've made significant progress on your character, and your accounts. It's a PvE game, very similar to Destiny, Anthem, Warframe. Long story short, you're gonna have to put in the time, you're gonna have to grind for specific items, specific, uh, you know, experience, so that you can level up your characters, heroes, and you can also level up your individual power level, which will give you access to more missions, etc, etc. I just want to point out also, another con when it comes down to save the world, at the lower levels of play, it has a lot of leechers, and it has a lot of AFK players, they're not really going to be much of an issue because the lower levels of play, like Stonewood and Plankerton, they're pretty easy. You should be able to kind of get by, uh, but you should know that. There are also uh, some AFK players and leechers, right, at the end game levels of play. But for the most part, it's not really as many as players tend to exaggerate. The thing is, in Save the World, sometimes you need to get quest items on a specific mission. And then players just want to call you a leecher because instead of being at the mission objective, you have to get quest items. Well, in a way, it's not really your fault that you have to get these quest items so that you can advance in your quest line. Do you guys get what I mean? The biggest criticism that Save the World gets is that it's really repetitive. And I feel like players that say this don't really actually understand what the Save the World gameplay is about and why missions actually exist in Save the World and why you basically just kill Husk on every single one of these missions. Missions in Save the World 
are there to serve you. For example, let's say that you need a schematic XP to level up your weapon. So you're gonna be playing a specific mission for a specific amount of time to get the schematic XP that you need to level up that weapon. Now you want to have the weapon with full legendary perks. So you're gonna be playing another mission so that you can have the legendary perk up so that your weapon is basically maximized. But now you want to use this specific sword that you leveled up with a specific set of heroes because if you use the specific set of heroes, you are going to sort of maximize you know, like the sword, and of course, you're going to have a really good hero that is going to be able to destroy the husk really quickly, right? Save the world, it's about fulfilling two things. The power fantasy that players have in PvE games, you know, you're always going to be increasing your power level, making your weapons better, making your heroes better, etc, etc. And the second thing that Save the World is meant to fulfill is that grind, you know, that chase. Like, a lot of us PvE players just want something to sort of chase after, want something to grind after. And like I've said before in this review, games like Destiny 2, Anthem, Division, it gets to a point where I've grinded so hard for everything that I don't have anything to grind for, but that's not the case with Fortnite Save the World. I always have something to do, and that's why I don't find the game repetitive, because it's not about killing zombies for me, right? It's about killing zombies because it fulfills the power fantasy of you having a loadout that works perfectly for you. And it's also about killing zombies because destroying these zombies is going to give you the materials that you need to actually fulfill the ideal loadout or the having the ideal weapon or having, you know, the ideal survivor squad so that you can be maximum power level or that you can level up as fast as possible. And guys, that is my in-depth review on Fortnite Save the World. Full disclosure, I am an Epic Games affiliate and my supporter creator code is Salvaje if you guys want to rock it. But again, I didn't make this video because, you know, I didn't make this video because Epic paid me or nothing. They haven't paid me a single dime. All right, I'm making this video because I want you guys to make a smart purchasing decision. I think if you're a PvE fan, like if you like games like Destiny, if you like grinding, if you like games like World of Warcraft, you're going to love Fortnite Save the World. Like I said, it's the best PvE game that I have ever played. And I think, honestly, I don't even think Borderlands 3 is going to be able to surpass Save the World. But I guess we'll see when that comes out and I start covering it. I hope to see you guys on my next Save the World video. Check out the description below for a lot of useful Save the World uh, videos. And I will be seeing you guys on the next one.